well. It's the grown into becoming the um, biggest civil society media initiative in Tanzania and probably in East Africa. Uh, that is a media platform reaching out to uh, young people and communities across Tanzania uh, with information about uh, a series of issues. We started off with health, but work also now a lot with entrepreneurship, financial education, citizen engagement. So basically, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a publishing house, it's a media house, you could say. We produce television programs, we do two print magazines, we do radio, we also work a lot now on mobile uh, messaging. Uh, <clears throat> and this initiative started uh, already 12 years ago when I was working in Tanzania and realized that there was a dearth of you know, possibilities to reach out to people in the rural areas with information and that the right to information was, was you know, not being met. People were not being informed and educated about the things that you know, concern their everyday livelihoods and, and, and lifestyles. And I was very engaged at that time in the health and HIV prevention, sexual health, family planning uh, arena. So we started off by thinking, how can we produce you know, popular media uh, using basically people's own stories uh, to talk about issues relating to those topics that built on their own experiences, um, their own, you know, life situations. So we started going out into the field with digital cameras and laptops and collecting stories. And people started, you know, telling their stories and they were excited because in Tanzania until that time, very few had actually focused on ordinary people's stories. Most of the media content was very top down. It was, you know, political leaders speaking up. So we, we, what we wanted to do was create a, a, a voice initiative, you know, from the bottom up, giving voice, giving the opportunity for, for ordinary people to speak up and tell their stories and start, you know, entering into a conversation. And this is what happened. And it really took off. You know, we started off 12 years ago, very small. And today we are, uh, you know, we're uh, working with a series of different media, like I mentioned. Uh, we uh, are pr print media FEMA, which has been one of the core products, uh, you know, reaches out to nearly all the secondary schools in the country and about 300 NGOs. So basically the media platform today reaches 10 million out of 40 million people. And we have built a very powerful brand that people associate with and identify with and want to be part of. We call it the FEMA brand and the FEMA family. Um, and, and basically, uh, the strength of the brand is this, that it's given people an opportunity to speak up. One of the things that they started expressing views about many years ago was that, listen, it's great that you talk about sex and health, but we need jobs and money. And we were a little bit at loss as to how to tackle this. So, um, while we had for many years been very involved in just you know, launching this media platform and you know, getting it out there and building it, um, uh, we started uh, you know, uh, being also invited to international fora like the Talberg. And that is actually how our story, uh, our conversation, you could say, uh, entered into to a new level. Uh, namely that we were invited to Talberg and started telling our story here and meeting people uh, that had you know similar stories or other stories and and discussing with them you know how we could work together etc to 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 solve some of these challenges particularly I think as inspiring for us was thinking around how we could take on board our media platform the whole issue of um, nature conservation uh, the environmental issues, the climate change issues, but, you know, uh, in a way tackling it through what was relevant for young people, namely jobs, so thereby green jobs. So the Rework the World initiative, for instance, was, was very inspiring for us. And uh, the Rework the World initiative, which Talberg, uh, uh, you know, uh, staged together with the, 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 the YES initiative, uh, also organized a series of workshops and, and, and events 
where different part parties came together to converse about these issues also in the region. And uh, Femina Hip, we helped organize the Dar es Salaam meeting. And that was for us a real eye-opener also to other partners uh, in our own community that we hadn't really, you know, known of or been in contact with. So, you know, uh, we launched this agenda then, also in dialogue with some of the partners that we met through the, the, the Talberg WeWork for us. Um, about um, you know changing mindsets around uh, entrepreneurship. So one of the things that we've done during the last year is that we have staged a huge uh, television competition, uh, which has also been mainstream through all our other media. Uh, which is basically we travelled around the country and identified six young entrepreneurs under the age of thirty, uh, three, uh, and uh, selected six of those three women and three men. Uh, who then uh, participated in a television, uh, you could say, competition. And that, by the way, that competition, uh, we were inspired two or three years ago by something we saw here. There was a similar group from Afghanistan, remember, who, 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 who had done something similar there. We came back to Tanzania and said, let's see if we could do something like that here. It's been a huge success. Um, and uh, basically, it's been about showcasing, you know, how to, to initiate your own businesses, how to know your market, you know, how to um, access uh, financing, if not from banks, from agriculture, for instance, you know, where you can, you know, uh, gain credit, etc. Uh, students, for instance, in schools, there are, there's no light in school, so students are studying with kerosene lamps under the mosquito nets, and we've had a couple of disastrous fires in Tanzania where you know the girls have been locked in and burnt, uh, you know, injured by by terrible fires, because of of, of kerosene, and we know that kerosene is also very polluting, and um, so we we basically uh, got together with one of the partners that we met at Talberg, namely D Light, and launched a, a big campaign to educate people about solar lamps, uh, about solar energy, you know, and the asset because. It, the, the knowledge is not very widespread in Tanzania. And so we had this education campaign that we managed to get some, some support for. And then actually during the last year, we have also sold uh, on a special offer together with D-Light, the, the lamps to schools, to headmasters. And in the span of four months, we were able to sell something like 50,000 solar lamps to schools. So, um, yeah, so we, you could see, say that our media platform, which has really grown from being quite small to, you know, a, a, a definite actor, you know, on the scene in Tanzania, reaching out to huge populations, uh, young people and communities, um, uh, has, has taken on you know, new agendas, uh, not just health, but also now increasingly mindset change around entrepreneurship and how to, to, to make your money work for you through savings and, and you know, other ways of, of gaining credit, agriculture being one. And then also um, you know, working more with alternative sources of energy, educating young people about uh, you know, solar, solar lamps, how these can be used, etc. cetera. And, and people are really picking up on this. So, so, yeah, we have a lot of new initiatives, you know, sort of lined up. And I must say that for us, you know, the, the, the coming to Telbag and participating in the conversation here and, you know, taking our local level conversation up to a global level and also getting response, you know, people saying to us, oh, that's interesting, or, you know, maybe we could do something similar in our country. And I'm saying sort of like, oh, yeah, maybe it is interesting, you know, because when you're so engrossed in, you know, doing your day-to-day -day work, you don't often have the time to lift, you know, and get new perspectives and get that sort of, you know, bird's eye overview. And it's very inspiring to do that. It's, it's very inspiring. It's inspiring to meet people with, with you know, other experiences and, and to share and, and, you know, find common solutions. So that's what Talbar has done to us, and I'm very grateful.